Before you get too excited to jump into drawing on iPad, I want to make sure you start off with a strong foundation, which has to do with setting up your views in 3D model first. It's not the most fun aspect, but it is important to not overlook this first step because it could come back and bite you later on. So in this video, I will show you what my 3D model setup looks like, how I save, pick, and export views to setting up the drawing template inside Procreate. So welcome back. My name is Henry and I help architects and interior designers save time, draw more confidently, and be more creative using iPad. So let's get into it. So for this demonstration, I'm going to be using a SketchUp model. Most people, when they are about to save a view to export for a presentation, they will just go to export and they will export this out as a 2D graphics. What I want to teach you before you do all that is to correct one thing. And that thing is your vertical lines. So you can see in this view, the vertical lines are kind of pointed slanted down uh, almost to a vanishing point. If you pay attention to architectural photography or renderings, you'll notice there is one thing that's true in all of their work is that all the vertical lines must remain straight. And this is an important photography principle in photographing architectural work. And this is very easy to accomplish in most 3D softwares. So in SketchUp right now under camera, you'll see that this is currently set to perspective. What we want to change this to is to a two point perspective. By doing this, you'll see that all the vertical lines are set straight for us. And now you can actually move this camera to somewhere lower to a lower angle and do the same thing for from perspective into two point perspective. And this is going to do the same thing for you as well. And you can still move your eye up and down left or right with this set. On my Mac, you just have to press shift and pan around your camera without losing the straight verticals. So it's at this point we want to export this as a JPEG somewhere in the desktop. And this I'll typically just do as a line weight and export. Now there is another version of this view that I also want to bring out and that view is without any edges or line weights. So this view only has shadow turned on and you'll see in all my other tutorials that this is a very important style to export as well because you can overlay this JPEG on top of your renderings and illustrations. And this is going to make everything a little bit more dynamic in your illustrations. So I'm gonna do the same thing to my desktop and I'm gonna export this as shadow. So effectively, every time you save a rendering to work later in Procreate, you'll have a shadow export and then you'll have a line weight export. Now the line weight export is really to help you underlay for you to trace over with more details. I mean, as you can see that this model really lacks a lot of finer details that currently isn't designed for. But in your drawing, what you can do is really quickly add those details in form of sketches to suggest cabinetry and materiality, which is much easier and faster to do when you're drawing than to spend the time to carefully model this. Now, so on my desktop, I have these two files and when you are ready to bring them into Procreate as an underlay, for me, it is really easy. I use a Mac, so I rely on my AirDrop very frequently. So you can see that right now, my AirDrop is detecting my iPad as a source. So I can simply just AirDrop this into my iPad and I will have my JPEGs essentially saved into my iPad gallery. Another way for non-Mac users is to basically move it to a cloud service like Dropbox or iCloud Drive. So every iPad comes with iCloud and for the sake of this demonstration, I am going to copy these two image and I am going to just paste it in here and in no time they should be synchronized to the iCloud and I'll find them in Procreate, which is what we will do 
right now. So with the airdrop approach, you can see in my gallery, I have these two image currently gallery. And I'm going to try to pull this in to procreate. Now, before we do all that, let's make sure we have the right canvas size set. And I'm going to teach you how to do this very quickly. This is the setting that I personally use in all my sketching and illustrations. And I've found this to be most appropriate for my own needs. And my need is really just on 11 by 17 size paper at 300 dpi so i'm going to do that with you here so make sure you have your templates set to either centimeter or inches depending on where you are geographically here in the us i am going to set my width for 11 inches and height for 11 and i'm going to go ahead and just have the 300 dpi remain as default and this is going to tell me that i'm going to have a maximum layer of 35 which is fine i don't ever go over that number of layers but if you do have a ipad with a sm smaller memory size you might want to tweak these settings so you can most optimize the number of layers that you can have when you're drawing now the next thing that i want to point out is actually the time lapse I like to have the time lapse recorded in the biggest pixel sizes I can. So for me, that's 4K and lossless format. I found this isn't actually a huge size if you record it this way, but this is going to give you the, the nicest resolution. If you want to download this and use it in your social media post or whatnot. So I find this gives you that most flexibility when you have it at this size. Now, if you don't think that's important to you, you can save some space with, with the default setting when 1080 with a good quality, that's also fine. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just gonna go ahead and just revert back to my 4K and lossless quality, and I'm gonna hit create. So now when you create, this is going to automatically open the paper in Procreate. To load in your drawing, there's actually a couple of ways to do this. First, I'm gonna do this within the iPad and that's what I do most of the time. So I'm gonna click on this wrench button and then click add. And now I'm going to insert a photo instead of a file. So this photo is going to find that photo that we imported in from SketchUp. And that's both of these right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap in the line weight first and then proceed with the shadow. So now both of these are loaded in. What I like to do is to go ahead and combine them into a folder. So this folder is useful is, you know, first you can turn them on and off at the same time. Also, it's useful because I typically don't like to have my drawing be so close to the border. So if it's grouped as a folder, what you can do is you can use your transform tool and make this folder bigger or smaller or the images inside bigger or smaller without needing to transform them independently. So right about here is probably what I will do. And visually it gives me a little bit more breathing room to, to draw around. Now, if you are not using the airdrop method, I'm going to show you a different way of bringing in the two photos that we saved. And that's for inserting a file instead of a photo. And now you can see that I currently have the number of different cloud devices already set up for my iPad. I have my personal Dropbox, I have Google Drive, and I also just have the Apple default iCloud Drive. So for this example, I did save my images in the iCloud Drive, and you can see by date, I have this shadow and the line work drawing in here. And you can do the same thing with Google Drive or Dropbox. But what I wanna show you is you can just tap on this image and it's going to download it from cloud. So I'll do the same thing for the other line work version of the same image. And like you do in gallery, you bring in both exactly the same way. And then you can combine and create a folder to resize later on. There is one more thing that I wanna talk about is in both inserting a file and inserting a photo, you can also left swipe each of these options and it's going to tell you to insert it as a private file. And what that means is when you insert a gallery or a picture as a private photo like this I do right now, this private photo isn't going to show up in your time lapse. 
So in your time lapse, this is just gonna be a white background. So as you are drawing over this private photo, you are not going to be recording this as a background. What that will do is it's gonna give you a clean drawing recording of your just lines and a time lapse of your design and whatnot without this background. And that may be nice for marketing purposes. So I just wanna point that out. It is a feature that not everyone is aware of. If you are interested in seeing more about how I work, what my unique approach to sketching in a professional environment looks like, I have a free three-part workshop for architects and interior designers on my website, showing you many of my behind the scenes workflows. Just click the link below to sign up. Otherwise, I will see you next time.